Hi, I'm Ashton, and today I just wanted to do a chill video where I watch a video called Do All Gay Men Think the Same? This is from a series that a channel called Jubilee does, where they get like a group of people that share one aspect and ask them questions and see how they compare. Um, and as a gay man, maybe all have different opinions. It's their way of creating a series to say like, even though these people all share this one characteristic, they might not all think the same way and that's cool and fine. So they did one for gay men. I have not watched it. I'm gonna watch it today with you, but first I'm going to reapply my lipstick because I've had two meals since I put this on and I'm just now realizing how bad that inner part looks. So give me a moment. So I've seen a couple of these videos before. Um, there aren't many that I've seen that like apply to me. So I thought it would be interesting to just see how I compare to other gay men. Um, this is on like a agree-disagree basis, but I'll probably explain my answers as we go along. This video is about 10 minutes, um, so my video is probably gonna be a bit longer, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I'll link the video down below, um, I'll probably cut bits and pieces as it applies to this video, so if you want to watch the full video, I will link that in the description. I'm going to scoot over this way so that I can- oh, that lighting looks bad. I'm going to scoot over- this- this lighting also looks bad, it's fine. I'll just scoot over here pop up the video here, and you can watch it along with me. First things first, um, this group is like relatively diverse and I appreciate that. The person in the front's pretty cute. Um, I see there's an older guy-ish a few people of color can't really tell currently because they're standing in the line, as you can see. But yeah, that's that's cool. Everyone is a little bit gay. Okay. Um, I don't know if I said, but I'm going to pause before they move and tell you my my reaction. Um, I don't agree with that statement because it takes people's self identification away from them, which I think is a shitty thing to do. Um, I do think more people are bi and more people are LGBT than is recognized because people a don't know it exists b internalized by phobia internalized homophobia um so i agree that more people are lgbt plus than we think there are or than others think there are but i don't think we should apply labels to other people that <laughs> they don't claim so i guess i would say slightly disagree purely on the basis of not wanting to apply labels to people who don't claim them but let's see where the other gays go This, this one's this one's a tough one because like I have I, I definitely have like straight friends who wouldn't do anything with me even though I find them very attractive and I I joke I joke around with them like dude I'd hit <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know they wouldn't do anything and I think a lot I, I think a lot of straight guys don't do it because it's like oh no homo bro the, the no homo thing is like so social if you guys like actually stood away from that and like I don't know experimented and tried out for yourselves you might actually find out that you like some certain things. Um, I definitely agree with him that the whole no homo thing, you know, in homophobia. That's why people aren't gayer, I guess. Partly, at least. People are born gay. People are born gay. This is an interesting one and definitely a very divided one. Um, I am mixed on this, and it's difficult because I'm a psychology student, right, and we don't know what makes people gay. Neuroscientists, uh, biologists, nobody knows what makes people gay. It just is. There's no gay gene that we've found. There's no, like, gay brain cell, right? And it's something that, even though people have researched it in the past, it's something that I think, personally, is ethically bad to research, because if we do find that gay gene, um, if we do find that, you know, gay brain cell, then there's ways to tell, biologically, which is shitty, gatekeepy, can, you know, it takes away people's self-determination. I don't think we should be looking for a scientific reason as to why people are gay, or why people are trans, for that matter. Um, I believe it's unnecessary, it's reductionist, and I don't think it really matters. I think we should just respect people because we should, not because it's natural, right? That's called a naturalistic fallacy, and I don't like it. So, again, just like the last one, I disagree on principle. I don't necessarily think people aren't born gay, um, but I don't think they are. I would probably just stand in the middle for this one. <laughs> I'm interested to see, like, where people go, and especially their justifications. Three, two, one, go. Can you not stay in the middle? Maybe you can't. <laughs> Hi guys. So, <laughs> I think this is more of a multifaceted question. 
because I consider gay as not just who you're sexually attracted to, it's part of an entire experience. So if they discover themselves and they realize, hey, maybe I could have a relationship with someone of the same sex, does that mean they magically became bi at that point, or are they born that way? So he sees it as more of like an identity-based thing and a cultural thing, which I think is also a good way of looking at it. Like, being gay is not just one thing that like you're born as, like having blue eyes, right? When you have blue eyes, you have blue eyes. It's not that you like just have no eyes and then you meet other people with blue eyes and you're like, oh, maybe me too. It's not like a community thing. It's not a cultural thing. Being gay to an extent is, um, and obviously you can be gay without that sort of community and support system as well. But I guess my point is, and probably this guy's point is, it's something that's a lot more complex than just something that is a biological fact. And I, I think you guys were kind of touching upon more than just the sexuality aspects, some of like the cultural aspects, the mannerisms of being gay. I think those are culturally learned things and also things that you're comfortable with and how you express yourself. But I think from like a sexuality standpoint, I mean, sexuality develops as you're going through puberty and like you're not like, you know, coming out of the womb like, hey, let's like have sex, you know? I prefer masculine men. Ooh, I prefer masculine men. This is gonna be the whole mask for mask talk. Um, uh, I would say strongly disagree because I don't really have a preference. I love a good twink. I would date someone that expresses themselves in like a goth or punk way as well, um, which is typically seen as not feminine, more androgynous. I would say if anything, I prefer androgynous men. Um, I love a good twink. I love a good bear. I love a good otter. <laughs> I don't think I really have a strong preference, but there is like a prevalent issue within the gay community of men being like, I only date masculine men, and that can be partly um, influenced by internalized homophobia as well, which is interesting in a whole other discussion, and I wonder if any of them will bring that up. Three, two, one. Oh. Everyone but one person went to the agree side, and the one person on the disagree side is somewhat disagree. Are all these gays, like, mask for mask? Well, not all of them are mask. I don't know, interesting. Personally, I, I'm a really feminine, flamboyant person, so just having that same energy with another person just doesn't seem really attractive to me. I want to find someone who's, like, different, unique, and someone I can learn from. So just, like, having someone who's almost identical or similar to me, I feel like I wouldn't grow enough. That's interesting and like i don't want to invalidate his sexuality obviously in any way but i don't think it's very correct i guess to say that just because two people are on the more feminine aspect of gender presentation that they're the same like me and any other feminine gay person i know or any other androgynous gay person i know it, it, same goes for like trans people same goes for any whatever gender whatever sexuality just because you have the same expression does not mean in any way that you're similar people one of my closest non-binary pals presents in sometimes a pretty typical feminine way um but their gender is so different than mine and i sometimes if not often present more femininely than them and we're just two very different people even though we both kind of fall in the same box when it comes to gender presentation um we still learn a lot from each other and i don't think it's a very like, I don't know, it seems insensitive, maybe, and a bit reductionist to say that just because two gay men are feminine means that they can't learn from each other. I'm on this line because I want someone who is my equal. Like, I identify as a masculine man, therefore, I think the reason I strongly agree is just because I want that equality in my relationship as a masculine man. <laughs> Ooh, that, that, that reeked of toxic masculinity. Again, not to, um, like, downplay whatever these people want in their lives, but to say that, like, I want my equal, implying that feminine gay men are his lesser, um, that's gross, no thank you, oof, oof. <laughs> I think, yes, there's a lot of innate attraction of what, what you like, what you're born with, but, like, also there's so much, I think there's a lot of social pressure that you don't even realize it's happening subconsciously of what, like, you're trained to like, because I do like masculine men as well, and then I was like, kind of taking a step back, I'm like, wait, why is that? Why do I like that? Like, am I being kind of force-fed that? When I was growing up, uh, you know, gay men were defined as feminine. And I was fem had a lot of feminine characteristics as a young boy. And I, you know, and I, I was singled out because of that and bullied some because of that. 
But I, was, I sort of was always drawn to people who were masculine. And I don't know if it was because if there were people who were feminine, that reminded me of parts of myself I didn't like. I think there's probably an aspect of that. But you're sort of, you're sort of attracted to what you're attracted to. I think there's not a lot of logic in it. I liked him. I like him a lot, um, so far at least, because the way that he sees it, he's like, well, I'm attracted to what I'm attracted to, but it could be because of this. It could be because of internalized nomophobia. And that's a really good thing to recognize, I think, as opposed to that guy that was like, well, I'm a masculine man, so I want someone that's my equal. Um, <laughs> Grinder's unhealthy. Um, I don't use Grinder because I'm in a long-term relationship. Uh, I would say it's just as unhealthy as other dating apps, but you can probably use it in a healthy way. I don't have any experience with it. As a trans person, it's probably not the safe, safest place for me, but um, I'd probably stay in the middle again because I think it's a lot more complex than something just being healthy or unhealthy. Same way it is with any social media. Um, I actually talked about that in a class recently and I'm not going to get into it because it's a long discussion, but yeah, there's no unhealthy, healthy, like, boundary. It really depends on the person and how they interact with the site. Three, two, one, go. Okay, so they all went to agree, except for the older guy, who I'm assuming doesn't use Grindr. Um, I know that's a presumption, but we'll see. But yeah, that's, that's funny. Interesting. I, I'd be with the old man on this one. I really like him. He's not that old, I'm exaggerating, but like, I like him. I think there need to be more uh, arenas in which gay men can meet each other. Um, I'm a gay father. I have a daughter who's 18 and a son who's 13. When I was growing up, the idea of a gay man growing up and getting married and being monogamous and being happy and having children was from Mars. And when I, my husband and I, uh, we're starting to have our kids. We went with a group of people called the Poplet Club, and it was gay men who wanted to become fathers. And it wasn't until that time that I finally found my tribe. I, it was like, oh my God, these are people like me. They weren't any sort of gay stereotype. They just wanted to have families. And that's what you don't see on Grind or anywhere else like that. I think that's a good analysis too. Um... <laughs> I agree that we need more places to meet each other and such, and, you know, LGBT centers can be a great place for that, but even that sometimes exists within a bubble, and it's a bubble that I'm lucky to be a part of. Um, like, once again, I like that man. Um, younger LGBT plus people have a lot to learn from people of, like, the same identities as us that grew up in different times, I think, and, you know, I wish more of us listened to our elders, I suppose. Here we go. Um, this this is gonna be interesting. Well, Pride Month, uh, you know, is because of Stonewall, because Stonewall happened and Stonewall was necessary. And as a, you know, revolutionary radical leftist gay, um, I fucking love Pride Month for its political aspects and for its history and especially considering the radical history behind it. Um, however, I do think it has become monopolized and become like, corporatized in ways that I fucking despise. Um, so I think it's necessary, but I don't think it's necessary in the way that it exists today. Um, it's definitely good for visibility, which can be really important for younger LGBT plus people and older LGBT plus people that don't know what they are yet. But like, it's been corrupted in a way that I don't like. Um, but I do think, I think the statement itself is kind of implying a larger um, topic of visibility and like openness about being gay that I do like. So I would probably go to slightly agree and then explain myself with like, however, capitalism bad. <laughs> oh, oh, this is interesting. Um, I am on somewhat disagree because I believe Pride Month was necessary because we were in a time where gays weren't allowed to be who they are and, and basically everything we are now and that's great. I just think like the Pride Month was good when we needed it, and it's good to keep up with traditions, but I think it just goes a little too far sometimes for me personally. Um, I mean, for him personally, fine, okay, cool. And it's good that he at least acknowledges a little bit of that historical aspect. However, Pride isn't just for gay people, there, and get, oppression of gay people isn't over by any means. Um, I don't know if this is coming from a more, like, 
America-centric mindset or what, but, um, yeah, I wasn't a fan of that statement because <laughs> I was curious to see why he was on the disagree side, and I was wondering if it had to do, like, with why I kind of disagree in a way, but, um, no, I think the assertion that we don't need it anymore is kind of dismissing the issues that a lot of LGBT plus people still go through, especially trans people. Um, and yeah, that, that made me uncomfortable. Like pride is not just for gay people. Pride is not just for like well-off gay people that don't need it anymore. Didn't like Coming that. out too, I, I think for everybody, it's, it's a process from the time you begin to realize you're gay until you hopefully can fully accept it one day. There were years where it was like, I would never go near that pride. I would like go six blocks out of the way not to be associated with it because it was so scary to me. And it was a gradual process. And the first time I did do it, it was the most empowering moment just to be part of thousands of people. I, I had the same feeling too, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's, I think pride is so important. I think pride is so, so important. And like, cause I mean, we have a lot more rights than we did 50, 60 years ago, but like we're still not equal citizens in a lot of places and we're still not equal in a lot of people's eyes. And like pride is every goddamn day, just like being yourself authentically without any questions and just like fighting for what you believe in. It's still so important though, every day to just to really be proud of who you are and really express. I like that jacket. I know I have a friend that I feel like would wear that. <laughs> Oh, they're done. Nice. There's still like a minute of video left. Okay, they're just talking about the production behind it, so not relevant to this video in particular. But yeah, um, that was interesting. I feel like I'm probably more radical than most of those gay men. We didn't get to see a lot from any of them. Like, you know, I don't feel like I know any of them or anything, but um, just from what we saw, I think I probably have a bit more of a radical perspective on queer rights as a whole, and obviously on politics probably, and I also think probably all of them are cis. I don't know that people necessarily reach out to trans men when it comes to looking for gay people, um, even though there's plenty of gay trans men, plenty of gay trans women as well. So yeah, that was that video. That's how I compare to the other gay men in the world, or at least a handful of them. Um, there's also one of these for all- do all trans people think the same? There's one for do all men think the same? Um, do all teens think the same? Maybe that would be interesting. There's one for vegans. That could be fun. There's one for atheists. There's one for people with mental illnesses, and there's one for disabled people. Those are all the ones that apply to me. So if you want to see me compare myself to others in those groups, um, let me know, because I think this is kind of fun. Um, they should do one for non-binary people. Maybe I'll pitch that to them. Maybe they'll pay me. So, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this chill, fun, casual video. If you're also a gay man, let me know what you think. They don't have a lesbian one, I didn't see one at least, so, um, hmm, they should do that too. But, anyways, I am going to edit this video now, and later I'm going to go to a recorder ensemble meeting. <laughs> Sorry if the lighting was a bit weird in this one, it's bright out there and I don't have a lot of light in here. Goodbye, comrades. Let me know how you think your thoughts might differ from different groups that you're in, because I think that's always a fun discussion. And I'll talk to you later, maybe.